while in keeping with the seemingly uh, Talmudic Jewish custom of attacking free speech, uh, this is yet another example of that. Because they've been going after free speech for almost 2,000 years ever since the days of the uh, early church. They've been, you know, attacking free speech like in Acts 13, Acts 17. They did it to Jesus Christ in John 5, uh, John chapter 10, John chapter 8. They tried that. So attacking free speech is a long uh, has, has a long history that, that goes back a long way with the Talmudic Jewish lobby. But here is just yet another example of that. In this case, they're using these communist Nazi-like tactics to silence freedom of speech of those they disagree with. So, this is on uh, the Jewish Daily Forward. It says, Cannery missions threat grows from U.S. campuses to the Israeli border. This is the second story in a series on co uh, covert tactics targeting Israel's critics. Yeah, and I, I've established my position on Israel, uh, racial Israel before. Uh, this is when I criticize Jews. I'm criticizing it on religious grounds. I'm criticizing religious Jews, not uh, racial Israel. So I wanted to throw that out there. But it says here in the article: Last December, Andrew Caddy flew to Israel to visit his mother. As he walked through the Ben Gurion International Airport, officials pulled him aside and said that the security services wanted to speak with him. Uh, Caddy is among the leaders of a major pro-Palestinian advocacy group, and border authorities always question him when he travels to Israel to see his family. This time, however, something was different. D uh, during his second of what ended up being three interrogations, spanning more than eight hours, Caddy realized that much of what the interrogator knew about him had come from Canary Mission, an anonymously run online blacklist that tries to frighten pro-Palestinian students and activists into silence by posting dossiers on their politics and personal lives. <laughs> Sounds like something the Nazis would do or the communists would do. You know, I've said this before, the Talmudic Jewish lobby has uh, been using Nazi tactics to try to go after their critics. They, they, they do it all the time. They've been doing it for quite a while and they still keep doing it right now. See, they have a lot in common with the Nazis and how they function and operate against their opponents. But it says here, uh, Caddy's interrogator asked a question, asked question after question about organizations listed on his Canary Mission profile, a pro-Palestinian organization that Caddy has been involved in with, but which wasn't listed on Canary Mission a profile went unmentioned. Hours later, a third interrogator confirmed what Caddy had suspected that they were looking at his Canary Mission profile. Uh, Canary Mission had. Uh, has sorry has said since that it went live on in 2015 and seeks to keep pro-Palestinian student activists from getting work after college. Yet in recent months, the threat imposed to college students and other act other activists has grown far more severe. Yeah, a part of living in a free society is you got free uh, free expression and free speech and exchange of ideas you don't like. But you see, the Nazi Talmudic Jewish lobby doesn't like that. They can't. They just can't stand the idea of the ability to speak freely. You see, it's only, it's only, it, it should only be allowed if they agree with it. If they don't agree with it, well, they're going to go full Nazi and try to censor it. But uh, continuing on in the article, it says, in addition to thousands of profiles, uh, to the thousands of profiles of pro-Palestinian students and professors, Canary Mission has also uh, added a smatter, uh, sorry, a smattering of profiles of prominent white supremacists, including 13 members of Identity Europa, uh, Identity Europa, sorry, and a handful of others. The site's profiles appear to be based entirely on open source intelligence that can be gathered by anyone with a computer, but the researchers are thorough, and some of what they post is, ex is exceptionally personal. Henry Mission's profile on Esther has Beg, a junior at Stanford University whose profile went online in May, includes two photographs of her as a young child and one taken for a campus fashion magazine. Uh, it feels pretty awful and I wish I wasn't on that website. She said, the president of Stanford's chapter of the Jewish Voice for Peace, a pro-Palestinian group. Yeah, posting childhood photos is pretty immoral, but hey, what do I expect from the Talmud of Jewish lobby? This is the kind of content I'd expect from them, being a bunch of Nazi communists that they are. And they've been doing this for quite a while now, and they are a bunch of haters of free speech, and they hate the idea of any kind of uh, expression of opinions they don't like. Because why? Well, they're a bunch of Nazis, that's why. They're a bunch of communists. The plain and simple. And their demonic little uh, delusion causes them to try to go out, you know, their delusion of their false, blasphemous, idolatrous, false religion of Judaism causes them to go out and act like full-on authoritarians against anybody they don't agree with. But this is to be expected from them, to be honest. This is this kind of immoral conduct of essentially stalking, really, is to be expected because, hey, they did the same to Jesus, they did the same to the apostles in the book of Acts and the four gospels. So this is the conduct that has been consistent with the demonic, uh, Talmudic Jewish lobby. So anyway, I wanted to point that out. Just more examples of their hate and attack on free speech. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.